All right, so you so you are a a woman of color in tech, mm-hmm. and as we know, the the tech space they're majority men mm-hmm. and majority even when it comes to women not being women of women of color. Mm-hmm. But also we look at like sales, like sales in general, like the majority of people that tend to go towards sales usually are men, or the majority of people that are in sales are men. Especially in tech, too. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You (laughs) merge it together like you're in tech sales. You're literally in a a hybrid where each of those industries by themselves are are more saturated with men. Mm -hmm. And But then you're like in a hybrid that now kind of compounds that. Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate as 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 a Latin woman, as a woman of color, how do you navigate in tech sales and... I guess, what are some of the the pros and cons you see of yourself being in this space? Yeah, so it's a lot and it's so funny. I think growing up, I've always loved to be in spaces where, you know, if somebody, not that anybody has directly said, you can't do this, but if if I'm in a feel like, okay, I need to break some glass ceiling, I wanna break that glass ceiling. I wanna, you know, do better. So it's funny, even in um, college, I, I studied electrical engineering and you'll you're come to hear that in engineers i think females i don't know the exact percentages it's but you very, it's very yes. low and i mean nowadays i think uh now a lot of more women are pursuing stem which is so great to yes. see um but even in um working in tech sales a lot of times i'm in when i join conversations with customers i am probably usually the only woman in that uh, you know on the on the call um the only woman of color and i'm usually the youngest to be honest a mm-hmm. lot of my colleagues tend to be older and it, it seems like a hidden secret of of people you know young people working in in tech sales um so how how, how like we, we had someone on who she's 42 people ask us all the time and i want to stop here what the age ranging? yeah like people are like well yeah. people ask oh am i too young and then other people are like oh i'm a too old so we've had someone on who's 42 and we have a guest who's coming on later yeah. and um, um or we have a guest who's coming and uh, i think he's around 50 he might be a little yeah. over 50 so we've got that covered but like how young are you as an account executive in tech sales making over 200k so there's a lot there's a lot of young professionals in tech sales but i think Again, I I am probably like most of my colleagues. I am the next. I, again, I don't know. I don't know the particular ages, but I think my next colleague is around. I think is twenty years older than me, to be honest. So Whoa. I work with a lot of people who I honestly see they kind of treat me like a daughter, my coworkers, because oh, okay. I'm like the youngest on the team. But I think that I take such pride on that. So you talk about the pros and cons, and so it can be intimidating. And I'm like, oh wow, I am having conversations when I when I talk with clients. I am talking to like C-suite level people, the so CEOs, cool. the CSOs, like of big companies, yeah. and. And I'm helping uh, influence their decisions and recommending technology to them. That's and I'm amazing. like, that is so when I think about it, it's intimidating. But then I think about, wow, like how many people at my age can say that? And so I take pride of that. And um, it kind of ties into imposter syndrome. I, you know, I know we, we all feel it, whether you're, you know, a person of color, whether you're a male, female, black, yeah. blue, white, whatever it is. A lot of people tend to feel imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what helps me combat that is First, I focus on the facts. What have I done in my job that has gotten me to where I am today? And Mm. I I always keep a list of accomplishments on the side that I've done to help me with like salary negotiations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But also just to remind myself like, hey, this is these are the facts. I've closed X, Y, Z, you know, deals. I've brought in this much revenue. Um, I've positively impacted my team in this way. Um, so I, I use that to remind myself like I am where I'm supposed to be. And a lot of times too, I think about, especially people working in tech sales, think about it. And it, you, you've been hired by your company to literally represent them. Like you, they, they've hired you as yeah. a salesperson to talk to other businesses and represent them as a company to sell their products. Yeah. So they must have a lot of faith in you <laughs> yeah. to, to do that. Like, yeah. cause you're not just working internally and uh, you know, out of, yeah, doing another they want job, you customer facing. you're, yeah. you're customer facing. Yeah. And that to me, again, at, at being 25, so young, I'm like, wow, like that fills me with so much pride. And I, I, I take that with me and I remind myself every day. I'm like, they must be, they yeah. must see something in me. Especially so. the notion that you, you went through four or five rounds of interviews. Yeah, exactly. You so it's, it wasn't it wasn't that, oh, someone might have made a mistake and hired yeah. you on. It's like you went through rounds with different people exactly. where they all agreed and said, hey, 
we want this person at our company representing us exactly so it's not a, it's not a hiccup exactly or a it's not all. a mistake so i have to always, i always try to flip it on the positive and i think of um i remind myself of that another thing again adding to being a woman of color so you don't i i put a fact out the other day that only two percent of latinas in particular are in the tech industry Whoa. and so th that to me that is a very sad <laughs> percentage is, to hear but i want to yeah. be i know for me when i see people similar to me if i see a strong latina woman in you know in a position of power it inspires me to want to um get to that same uh position to mm -hmm. want to work towards that um so that's kind of been my goal is i want to help break into those spaces and show other latinas or just other people of color like hey if i can do it you can do it too and let's do it together because there is a seat at a table for everyone that's true those are straight up facts uh there was a, a recent um you shared this with me uh recently and uh, correct me if, if i get this yeah, wrong no, but that they're like latin women are the actually the least paid demographic yeah so no yeah i last year i um saw i read an article where yeah latina women are the most underpaid demographic working demographic in the u.s wow so they make i think the statistic is they make 57 cents to the dollar that every that to every dollar that a white male makes yeah um, so you know you hear those comparisons you'll mm -hmm. see like 70 cents to a dollar so but the fact that they, they're the lowest paid working demographic i was like that's a neat again being latina Latino, but on top of that being a woman, a, yeah. a Latina, mm -hmm. it, it it just opened my eyes. And I was like, wow, um, especially coming from a low income background, I didn't grow up with much money. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I take pride um, in the fact that I'm making good money now at yeah. my young age, at such a young age. And I just want to keep working towards that. I remember when I first got my job offer, um, it, it was it was uh, crazy to me because I was going to make more than my parents combined wow. uh, at the time. Do your parents know that? Uh, yeah, no, they, they knew that. They're so proud of me. And I, and it opened my eyes. I was like, wow. And But the reason why I was able to get such a, a good salary um, starting off, because I was a priority of mine. I kind of uh, focused on that yeah. is because when I was doing engineering, um, I went to a really good college. I went to Princeton University. Um, so again, you know, the cream That's, of the crop, yeah. I think school really good. And the reason why I say that is because, um, when I was going there, um, graduating from college, I was my call, my colleagues. Yeah. My, um, my fellow colleagues, they were looking for jobs in like software engineering or investment banking, mm -hmm. and they were getting offers for six figures easily. So I was like, if they're out of college with no experience, are making a hundred K off the bat. I know it was with yeah. software engineering, you know, you code, so you, you tend to make more, um, that's more uh, a skill that's more in demand. But still, if they were gonna make six figures off the bat, then why can't I do that? Yeah. So I was very focused on, hey, let me get as close to six figures as possible. And again, not if it doesn't happen, doesn't happen. But at the same time, the fact that you put that in my sphere of influence, yes. that's something I'm gonna work towards. Um, so. The, I, I credit that a bit to why um, I did end up getting offer uh, for six figures because I was so focused on negotiating for that and working yeah. towards that. Um, so that's why I'm very, again, going back to the pay, I'm very open yeah. about pay because we tend to limit ourselves if we don't know <laughs> yeah. what's out there. <laughs>